my HO trains. They haven't been run in quite a while. First of all, here we have my switching layout. And the way it works, I have this long parking track here. It's not powered up, doesn't do anything but store stuff. Then down there, I have a lead for switching on the switching layout. And there's a switch here, so it goes like this. It splits. This is another long parking track. And here's a third long storage track. So these are, you could call them fiddle yards or whatever. Here's the, the switching track. And right here, this is the passing track so that an engine can run around. You need to really have that if you're going to have a switching layout. This is the lead at the other end. And there are two sidings here to switch to industries with. This little short siding, which has a, you'd call it a team track on an old railroad, a real railroad, because a truck would pull up, unload something onto the platform, which they could then load onto the train. And this is a hopper ramp made by Ulrich back in the 1950s. And here's a Ulrich operating hopper. It goes up onto the platform and the door is open and the coal would dump out. Over here is a lumber yard, a factory, fuel storage, a shed. And then we have the plastic fill motel, other various buildings stored back there just for something to be back there. We have some switch towers. Here's a freight station. It's a little semi-trailer parked by the freight station. About 30 or 20 years ago, I can't remember anymore. Time goes by so fast. You could buy a lot of really neat little cars in HO scale. Pretty cheap at Walmart. I wish they still had them, but they don't. But I've got them scattered all over the layout. Down here, these are Tyco bulldozers that go on the flat car that Tyco has. Here's another semi truck, Burlington Northern. The switch tower. This is a, a steam thing I made to power a steam engine, like it might operate a sawmill or something. It's on a skid ramp. I made it or somebody made it. I can't remember anymore where I got it. Now, I think this is a Concor Southern passenger car. This is a Gilbert HO switch engine. AHM River Rossi. This is one you don't see very often. It's a 2880 Baltimore, Ohio. I don't remember what this is. I think it might be a Athern. I think this one's an Atlas. There's a, an F unit of some sort. I can't even remember what my locomotives are anymore. I've got another F unit, probably a Bachman, I'm not sure, back here. Or maybe this is the FT. At any rate, I have a power pack down at the end. And that's the trouble with the switching layout. What I really need is a throttle that I can hold in my hand and walk around to do the switching. Because my switches are all manual, I do have uncoupling ramps, magnets strategically placed. Here's one but it's kind of op difficult to do any operation without walking around and throwing the switches at the same time. So I just don't have the skills to, or the money to go to DCC. Now I just had a derailment. Sure enough, it never fails. Why it derailed there, I don't know. We'll move this back by hand. Probably was off the track to begin with. Now this is a beautiful gondola that a deceased friend of mine made. I'll show it to you. That's the interior of the gondola. It was for his layout, which was called the Attic and Lofty. He carefully uh, made sure everything was perfect on his cars. I don't know what these symbols he put on mean, but it had to do with the quality of the car. They had to roll just right and all kinds of things. This is the only item I have from his train layout, which is beautiful, large, and elaborate. It was probably the best HO layout that ever appeared in Leon County, Florida. But it's gone now. 
gone with the wind, as they say. His buildings are scattered. All the craftsmanship, all the work he did. It was a beautiful DCC layout, very large. Yeah. Now we got the locomotive moving again. It stalled because the track's dirty. There it goes. Once again, it stalled. That's what happens when you don't run your trains, your track gets dirty. You needed a nudge. But that's how it would move a, a load down to that end. Then if we throw that switch down there, it could come down the other side. Switches now to see if I can actually do that. And I'll probably derail everything. But the switches are now thrown. And in spite of the dirty track, the engine's running. This is a Proto 2000. I think, this locomotive. You see it would come down here and we could drop a car down here if this spur was long enough or the engine could come all the way down and go back up that way, but the spur here is too short to do that. I'm just showing you how it works. Right here with an uncoupling magnet, you look where my finger is. And you can see that the train dropped off these cars right there by that magnet. That's the magic of these KD couplers and how they work. It actually worked that time. Now it helps if you have a placard or something on your layout to mark where these magnets are. Like I have one here, but it's not marked. I have one here, I have one here where this car is staged, one there, they're, they're, in, they're everywhere they need to be to actually make this switching layout work. So that's just a short overview of my switching layout, which I thought you would like to see. If I could just have a throttle that I could hold in my hand as I walk around, I would use it a lot more than I do, I think. But it is what it is, and it was fun putting it together. It was assembled out of cast off stuff. Somebody gave me from here to there. Another source, this one came in. I put them all together. I made the lead and I, in other words, it was salvage stuff that would have gone in a trash pile. So that's how I got the start to my switching layout. And I took it from there. Now, my other HO layout, I have Bachman track. The Bachman track is okay, but I'd rather have gone with the old Atlas or one of the other high, higher quality traditional HO track with the gravel road bed and the cork and all that stuff. So I may get around to changing it yet. Here I have this little scratch built sawmill. It has a donkey steam engine on it and it operates the little sawmill. It's on a very thin piece of styrene. It's just a bunch of scraps and stuff put together from different sources, kits, whatever. This is little H.O. man standing here to operate it, except he's probably not going to stand on his feet. I have to put something on him. But uh, this is the old Ravel pasture station. It's missing one of these. The Ravel barn. A warehouse or shed or something that somebody scratch built. A little city block. Here's the farmer's house. Ravel. The farmer's outhouse. That's where he does his thinking and philosophizing. That's also where Sears Dream Catalog books wind up. Here's the chicken coop, no chickens. 
Here's a little shed. This tree is supposed to have a tire swing hanging from the limb. Here's the little garage that goes with a farmhouse with a woody in it. There's a citrus tree now falling over. Here's another shed. You can lift the roof off of it to show what it looks like. These little plastic buildings are either other people's throwaways that I've fixed up or they're ones I built years ago. They got damaged over the years and I've, I'm trying to fix them up again. Most of my HO stuff is pretty well scrounged up. For a while, I would take off the NMRA couplers and put on the KD couplers and upgrade the trucks. And that's been done with a lot of these, but not all of them. But there's a lot of really nice cars out there that can benefit from a good upgrade. Here's an example of the state of Maine car. Upgraded wheels, KD couplers, weights put in it. When I weigh my cars, when I put weights in my cars, I add more than they really need because I don't like to see a car trembling as it goes down the track. I want it to roll solid. Now, my house's foundation is not quite level. And look at that. See how easily that thing rolls? Because it's been upgraded. That's the way you want your cars to operate. Really good rolling characteristics. I'm barely touching these and they roll. Very light on the wheels in spite of the weight in the cars. This is the way I think you should do it. Now this one doesn't, that one rolls great, look at that. But this one here is a sticker. Some of them roll easier than others. This one derailed, could use a little weight in it probably. It's a Southern, an old blue box Athern. You can tell the Athern's by the weight underneath, but you can see the upgraded wheels and the KD couplers on it. Now see how freely these roll? Barely touching and they roll. The reason I had a derailment is I forgot that I had thrown this switch, I think but it's back now. See that car roll by itself down the incline? That's how free rolling it is. Magnolia, metal wheels, Katie, couplers. I always have trouble putting HO on the track, but I got it on somehow. Now this is one I didn't do much to, other than the metal wheels. I like it because it would be some, something that would have run in Florida way, way back before the war. Standard Fruit Company. It came in a pack of five. I have a lot of old Florida East Coast type things, old freight cars and things, because I was trying to do a Florida style HO layout from back in the day. There were a lot of railroad systems in Florida. And of course they got consolidated and whatnots. Many of them started out as narrow gauge timber railroads. And they've actually sometimes found the old steam engines dumped in the rivers and things. There's one at the Department of Agriculture building in the state capitol on display. I think it was fished out of a river. And there's a beautiful Florida type, Florida steam engine. An engine uh, not built in Florida, but actually native to Florida on display at the Pioneer Village the Florida, the Cracker Cowboy Museum, they called it, down in Zolfo Springs. I think Zolfo was an Italian word, perhaps, for sulfur or something like that. I'm not sure, but apparently at one time, people were impressed by a spring that was down in that area. And that's how it got the name Zolfo. And it was, it's pretty much in the heart of Cracker Cowboy country. The cattle drives used to come from all parts of Florida, the Punta Rossa. And in Punta Rossa on the lower Gulf Coast, the cattle would be picked up by Spanish Cubans, paid for in gold coins, and shipped to Cuba because they preferred Florida beef to Texas beef. 
perhaps because of our wire grass, I don't know. But Florida was probably the largest cattle state in the country. Everybody thinks it was Texas. Florida was open range until 1949, which meant you better not run over somebody's cow who was in the road. It's hard to believe, isn't it? That recent. All right, so that's the uh, conclusion of this demonstration of my HO, the two layouts that I have. This may wind up being a two-part series, but I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you. Thank you.